And, and just for closing, we thought we would just have a couple of quick observations from a couple of members, uh, who are including some new members uh, of NCUC, uh, because we are all about outreach and bringing in new people into the process. And so I just wanted to bring up uh, Pranesh, Prakash and Steffi, are you feeling okay? Uh, Steffi Milan's been coughing a bit. And uh, Robin, is Robin here? Uh, Robin has stepped out for the moment. So just a couple of closing quick thoughts from new members, what they observed coming into this process. Uh, hello, everyone. So um, first of all, I'm, I really apologize for the coughing. It's not intended. I don't have any scary disease, don't worry. Um, so I was asked to just um, suggest uh, bringing the perspective of a newbie, some sort of uh, view from uh, outside the bubble. And as I don't want to be the one who stands between you and the wine, I'm going to try to be very quick. And I have only three uh, minor points. Well, first of all, why am I here? Uh, well, there's a very simple idea that I think keeps coming back throughout the day, which is the idea that infrastructure is not neutral. And so I come from a sort of an interest on um, a perspective of ethics in cyberspace. Now, I know it's not very easy to talk ethics uh, with engineers. I work uh, in a computer science department, so I'm very aware of that. But this is what we have uh, been doing here today. So my three points relate more or less uh, to that. And they are of very different nature, but um, I'm not going to propose any principle. I have a lot to learn from, from this crowd. So just some um, points of departure from what I've heard and go a little bit further. Uh, we have heard Marilia uh, saying that um, we have to put people at the center, and I couldn't agree more. But then the question is, who are these people? Uh, and to continue with the roadmap uh, metaphor that someone else used before, so whom do we want to have next to us on the bus? And I say the bus instead of the car, because I'm not American, and because car sounds more multi-stakeholder and a little bit more inclusive. And, and I tell you, I spend a lot of time with hackers, uh, we're deeply concerned, actually, about uh, the nature, the political side of the DNS, for example. Mm, are these people part of the community, and if so, how? So who is the community at the end of the day? Um, and how do we translate diversity in practice? Because we've heard a lot about diversity. What, what does it mean when to come here you need resources, not only uh, financial resources, but of, of course, you need quite some knowledge, and it's very difficult for me to actually follow all these acronyms that uh, float around the room, just to mention something that has already been mentioned today. And second point I want uh, to make is very uh, related to this, and it is how do we communicate what happens in the World Garden of uh, Internet Governance and the ICANN in particular. We have heard someone saying, um, I don't remember who that someone was, apologies for that, but that people, and he said my mother, is getting interested in, what, in, in the behind the scenes of internet governance. Is this good for, for ICANN? Is it uh, a danger? Is it an opportunity? And if it is an opportunity, is it an opportunity for what exactly? That's also something we should think about. And I understand this is not the main mission of ICANN, but we keep discussing the multi-stakeholder model. We keep uh, thinking that we are really multi-stakeholder. What does um, uh, inclusion uh, then mean? And then finally, third point, I'm an educator. I spend a lot of time with students, and I form the future interaction designer, computer scientist, and, and social media, whatever, blah, blah. And, and I really do believe that we have a generational challenge ahead of us. Because these people, they are brought up uh, using these tools, uh, but they do believe that there are some sort of magic uh, de set of devices and platforms that just happen, and they have no politics, they have no culture, that they exist in isolation. And this is actually very similar to what their parents think. And I think this is something we should actually uh, slowly start uh, worrying uh, about. So they're really uh, in the dark. Is it good for us? Well, I don't think so. So how do we make this relevant, what we were discussing here today, relevant to, to them? And how do we convey the knowledge and, the, and the, the, the history of a space like ICANN, which is very specific? while at the same time looking at enlarging the community, looking into uh, the future. And, and finally, we have heard Avery um, saying quite optimistically that we are the stewards in this process of intergovernance evolution. So I do think we should uh, somehow um, take these issues um, seriously for the future. Thank you. Thank you, Steffi. It's good to <coughs> It's good to remember that ICANN is only a part of the internet world. Uh, uh, 
Good evening. Um, this is actually my first ICANN meeting ever. Uh, so, uh, and, and I just, so I'm, I'm bringing a, a bit of an, uh, even more of an outsider perspective than, than Steffi is, uh, having uh, only looked at ICANN uh, from the intellectual property lens uh, earlier and, and from very far away, and, and now to actually look at the inner workings is something. Uh, but I realize that the more I, I learn about uh, ICANN and internet governance in general, uh, the murkier things seem to be. Uh, it's actually not getting any clearer uh, because one, uh, today I, uh, we've heard very divergent views about how multi-stakeholder ICANN is. Uh, for instance, uh, some insisting that it's actually uh, calling itself multi-stakeholder while being a very uh, top-down uh, process being led by a board that's not necessarily all that transparent, uh, whereas others are, you know, we found vehemently defending uh, ICANN's multi-stakeholderism and, and asking for, for better examples out there. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, we have, for instance, other kinds of uh, paradoxes. Uh, some, uh, for, for instance, for, for many years people have been insisting that uh, the U.S. oversight or stewardship of of, uh, uh, of the IANA is actually not not that very important. Uh, whereas now with this decision, it's a momentous decision. It's a very important decision. So I'm I'm not clear which one or the other it is. Uh, and there are so many processes that that we. Uh, touched upon uh, earlier today in the, in the uh, first session, and some that we didn't. Uh, everything from Visis Plus 10, uh, Net Mondial, uh, ICANN's new uh, process for, uh, you know, uh, which NTIA has asked it to, to commence uh, on, on the issues before us right now. Uh, the Global Commission on IG that, uh, that Chatham House and CG are working on. ICANN strategy panel, high level panel, uh, WGEC, uh, ICANN, CCWG, OneNet, and, and it actually goes on. Uh, I, but how do all of these actually uh, feed into one another? Uh, so while we were talking about clearing houses for general IG, I think we, we need some kind of clearing house for these kinds of clearing house processes even. It's, it's, it's a never-ending thing. Everyone wants to be the place where decisions are made or where certain kinds of things get done, but it's just increasing the, the number of uh, processes that are going about uh, and it's increasing costs. Uh, and I'll just narrate one very short anecdote, which is one line, that until very recently, I did not own a domain name. Uh, and the primary reason for that was cost. Uh, for me, uh, being in India, it would cost me around uh, 15 lunches uh, to own a domain name, whereas uh, for an American, it might cost around one lunch or, or a bit more. So, uh, and, and I think that there is a big difference, okay? And, and for developing countries, if you're talking about how do we get developing countries, it's a, a lot of it boils down to cost, cost of participation in DNS policymaking, cost of domain names, uh, cost of developing capacity uh, around these issues, et cetera. So, and, and that's something that, that I think we, we do need to focus on if you're uh, serious about, about being more inclusive about developing countries, and not just in terms of symbolism, but actual uh, participation of, of folks from, developing, uh, from the developing world in this. And uh, one last thought to put out there, uh, something that, that Stuffy also uh, mentioned about who is the community that we're talking about. For instance, are those people who are working uh, on, on ideas such as uh, alternative uh, naming systems, uh, are they also part of the community? Because obviously that kind of talk is not tolerated here uh, in, in ICANN. Uh, those who, are talk who have been talking about alternative DNS routes, uh, that kind of talk is also not permitted here. So are they also considered part of the community, though? I'm, I'm not very sure about that. So. Thanks, Pradesh. I actually think I could answer that last one. But <laughs> Robin, the cl closing thought. Thank you, Bill. 
I will be very brief. I know it's me, me standing in the way of the cocktail, so I just want to quickly tie together a few of the key points that we heard today that I think um, really stand out. Um, one of the things that really stood out for me is we heard representatives from, from the business community, we heard representatives from civil society, and they were saying a lot of the same things, which doesn't happen very often, so it might be worth paying attention to here. And what we've heard is that there are great concerns about accountability and transparency with respect to internet governance. Um, lip service is not enough anymore. Uh, when it comes to accountability and transparency. We need to see it in practice. Um, and so I think that's something that we've heard a number of times today and need to take seriously as we continue to evolve this discussion, come up with some solutions for. Uh, some of the key principles that we heard today uh, really stood out for me. The principles of internet governance, what kinds of ideals we should be holding out as we come up with these new rules and regulations um, first is democracy, the importance that they, these principles embody democratic principles, openness, the need for the internet to remain open, uh, freedom to innovate without permission, uh, the importance of human rights values being uh, infused into internet governance policies. Uh, we heard suggestions regarding a structural separation of operation and policy of the DNS. We heard a lot of talk about the need for bottom-up to truly be bottom-up and not just a fig leaf. And we also heard that multi-stakeholderism takes time and we shouldn't be shortcutting the time just to get a quick result. Um, two different perspectives that we heard today that I kind of want to hold out in terms of a juxtaposition against each other, um, I think they're both need to be taken into very serious consideration. And one is be careful what you ask for. And on the other hand, we also heard that this is an opportunity to evolve. And so we need to take both of these, uh, both of these concepts into our formulations going forward because I think they both are right. Um, so with that, I will uh, turn it back over to Bill. Thank you. Thank you very much, Robin. Okay, everybody's tired, everybody wants to go have a drink. I want to thank you all. It's, it's, very, um, it's very unique to see a room stay packed all the way through from beginning to the end of a meeting, uh, particularly a discretionary meeting at the front end of a long week. So I think that's a testimony to your interest in these issues. Uh, we really welcome the opportunity to have this kind of cross-community dialogue with you all. Um, and so we thank you for your participation, and we look forward to engaging with you the rest of the week. And now let's have a drink.